All right, come back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about my actual Hyperland configuration and how I have things set up. I had a people, a couple people in previous videos ask for like a demonstration of how I have things set up and with my hyper scrolling configuration and some things like that. So I just want to share that uh, with you guys today and show you what I am working with and how I have things set up within my system. So Obviously, this is the Hyperland desktop here. I'm currently using Cache OS, uh, using Kitty as my uh, main terminal, and uh, Fish as the shell there. So those are the actual you know specs and stuff that I'm using. And then if we go ahead and look at my configuration here, a couple things that I have set up is for my monitors um, here, I'm just sourcing out to the monitors comp here, um, which I use the actual NWG displays option to actually set up my monitors is easiest way to, you know, you know, set up monitors without having to go through and figure out the actual values and stuff that you have to put in to uh, make sure you have your monitor spaced out correctly. So easy tool, easy uh, way to get your, you know, monitors and everything set up the way you want to. So that's how I do that. And then if we go back into my comp, comp here, I do have my cursor as the modern ice. I've kind of always just been drawn to that uh, cursor. So I have always used that. So I have, you know, my cursors and everything set here and my default, you know, terminal as kitty. And then as far as my theming goes here, I do have my GTK theme set to Capuchin. And then as you can see here with my icons, I have them set to Tela Purple Dark um, is what they're set to. So I like to use these. This kind of just fits the Capuchin theme um, pretty well, especially if you're using the purple you know, variant. So just works out really well for me. So that's what I liked uh, to have there. And as you can see in the dock here, you can see the, the same icons uh, being used there and then yeah so the rest of the configuration here a couple of things that i do have set up are a couple scripts that allows me to um, switch between hyper scrolling and just regular tiling so right now it's on the hyper scrolling option so i can keep you know spawning windows and this can be scrolling just like you would in like neary or um, in mango wc and you may be wondering why aren't i using you know one of those and um, I do use <laughs> those as well. Um, I kind of bounce between, you know, all of them, you know, especially as a content creator, I like to test them and see what's new and, and all of the different, you know, window managers. But as far as my hyperlink configuration, I like to have the option of um, the scrolling because I got so used to it within um, Neary itself. So that's why I have that, you know, enabled in, in my system here. So yeah, so scrolling by default, but I do have a script. So for win, control, and then S, enables and disables actual you know scrolling option there so now when i do spawn you know new windows it's going to be in the dwindle option which um you can see here has uh changed and now it's dwindle and i'm basically just setting the state whether it's disabled or enabled i'm here and then changing which source confirmation is being sourced out um, within the actual script. So that's pretty much all that's um, happening within that actual script. And it's just, you know, reloading the, reloading everything with hyper CTL and then, you know, applying it accordingly. So just using hyper CTL to, you know, change the actual uh, general state, but with a script to do so. So that's how that's being enabled. So switch back to, uh, to tiling there. And then um, the other script that I do have is actually to change the, the current shell that I'm using. So I have this do a script to change the shell and then also change which key bindings I have active. Um, so I have like the DMS uh, key bindings here and then I have the Noctilia key bindings here. Those are the only two I have you know, enabled right now to do that. So that's under control shift and then S. So it takes a second and then um, it'll switch my entire, you know, uh, shell to Noctilia. And then obviously, see, I, I have the new, you know, bar down there. And then everything else is based on, you know, Noctilia here. So, so yeah, so I do like all the new animations and everything they're adding to Noctilia. Kind of like the, the new, you know, look and feel that they have there. But um, overall, I think I do still like the DMS a little bit better um, for day-to-day -day use. I, I just feel like it's like the most comfortable um, thing for me, but um, I do like having the option to be able to switch between them. And once again, since I, you know, I'm a content creator, I, I like to be able to switch and see what's new and um, just be up to date with, you know, what's going on and what, what new, you know, shells are out there. So I will be adding some more shells so that I may add like a, you know, a window option with either like Rofi or um, if I'm feeling adventurous i'll maybe try it through quick shell to add like a little pop-up window to be able to select which um you know shell you want to use may get there but uh not today so yeah so that's that 
I am also using uh, Piper here, so uh, that way I could actually open a uh, brand new window by doing Win Shift Enter or T to open my terminal, and instead it, it does this drop down um, terminal here. But what's nice about it, it actually you know, stashes it away. So if I do that again, it goes away, and I can bring it back um, to show you what that you know kind of looks like. I can you know run a command then here, and then you know stash it away, and then continue working, and I can come back to it, and that you know that command and everything that I was running was is will still be running or I can come back to it and run new commands or if I have like a nano do session or whatever I have going on in my terminal at the time it'll keep it there and then I can obviously like close it out and uh, create a fresh one as well so I do like having that feature and then the other piper feature that I have is the zoom um, option so I'm able to zoom in, you know, when I'm recording or when I'm, you know, showing somebody something or whatever the case is, it's just nice to have this, you know, feature to be able to zoom in, especially since I have a 4K, um, you know, ultra wide monitor it makes it easy to be able to show things. And that's another reason why I am using and have been using Hyperland for a little while now is because, uh, because of this feature, I have not found a equivalent that works well on Miri or um, Mango on WC. So if you do know of one, please let me know, you know, in the comments below, I'll definitely, you know, be checking that out to see if that, you know, that's something available to, you know, for me to use. But yeah. So as far as the rest of my um, actual, you know, layout and everything here, um, it's pretty simple. You know, here's, you know, my gaps and everything and then, you know, color borders kind of just matching the cat poutine theming and everything you have there. Very simple shadows using the default, you know, in and out um, animations. But I do have slide uh, vert because I actually like to use, you know, this option um, going up and down for my workspaces instead of left and right. I got used to that with Aniri, um, so I kind of just, you know, stuck with it. Um, it's kind of what I like to use now. And then as you can see here, I do have like the plugin um, information for, you know, my actual configuration for uh, hyper scrolling. I do have separate hyper scrolling keybinds here. So you can see that I have mod R, which just changes the actual, you know, size of the uh, window going through the different, you know, preset sizes. And then my mod shift R to go the opposite way as well. So whatever the opposite is for that. And then I have mod control R, which automatically uh, puts it in the largest state of the window. So mod shift R will you know, just do that and make it, you know, the full width of your uh, window there, because I do have the default option um, as just half window. Um, so if I have no window open on my, you know, workspace and I do open up a new window, it's going to open up in this half shape window here. So that way I can just, you know, easily make this, you know, full if I want to. Yeah. So, so that's how I have uh, that set up. And then if we go back into my uh, configuration here, just have a you know a few window rules, nothing crazy. I'm um, just you know de defining whether you know certain things are floating or tiling. And then I do yeah, here's the scratch pad configuration to have that you know kitty drop down option there. And then all my key bindings and sourcing you know down here at the bottom um, to source out you know where my key bindings go for all the different options that I have. And then obviously the scripts as well. So. Um, so yeah, so it's very, you know, pretty simple, you know, Hyperland uh, configuration that I have, you know, set up here. So nothing too, too crazy. And then um, as far as my, my doc goes, I am using the the default docs that come with uh, DMS or um, Noctilia, but a few people have like the uh, crystal doc that I had in a, a few of my videos. So if I actually come in here, settings, doc, it's going to disable the doc real quick. And then you can actually do a crystal doc dash D and that's going to open the actual doc that you see here. And then it's very easy to, to, to customize. So if I just go into appearance, you can actually change the you know appearance of everything, the animation speed, um, the size, the default, you know, color for inactive and um, active coloring. So tool tip, if you want to float margin, you know, all the, all the things are very easily um, configured um, in there. And then you can change like the time and like what you want to have um, in this bottom bar. And then, you know, pinning and uh, closing window, ed ed editing the launcher itself um, and everything is pretty easy to do. You can clone the bar and you can have them on, you know, certain uh, screens if you want to. And you can have them, 
you know, top, bottom, left, right, whatever you want to do. Um, so it's very, you know, customizable uh, dock and it's easy to install, you know, and it pretty much works anywhere. It works on like KDE, GNOME and uh, all the different um, places. So it's a very easy, uh, configurable um, dock that you can get and kind of just take with you and use wherever you want because I've used it on Neary, I've used it on Mango WC and obviously I've used it on, you know, Hyperland here. So very cool bar. Um, I would, you know, suggest it if that, that's something that you are interested in. But um, they have done some pretty, you know, decent updates to the actual dock um, within DMS. So that's why I've been using that. And, you know, it's been working pretty well for me and it's uh, very simple and easy to use. So, yeah. So um, if you have any questions about my, you know, configuration or anything, um, definitely, you know, drop a comment in the comment section below. And then let me know, you know, what you you might be using and, you know, theming wise and everything. And yeah, if you've been enjoying my, you know, content, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to support me, um, you can do so by joining the membership or you can actually support me on, on Patreon as well. But other than that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.